In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Portfolio 123's ranking systems. Portfolio 123's ability to rank stocks sets it farther apart from other stock-based strategy services than anything else the company has developed. There are plenty of screeners out there and a few half-decent back-testing engines, but as far as I can tell, nobody but Portfolio 123 offers ranking systems to investors. A ranking system consists of factors. Every stock in your universe is given a score between 0 and 100, depending on its rank, according to these factors. Let's take an example. Let's say you want to choose 20 stocks to buy out of the S&P 500, and you have 10 factors you want to consider. The screening method would be to set limits for each factor and see if stocks pass those limits. But you'll have a problem. In order to get 20 stocks that pass all 10 limits, your limits will have to be set very low so that almost all stocks would pass each one. The ranking method is very different. You would rank all the stocks on each of the factors and give them a score between 1 and 100, evenly spaced. Then you take each stock and add up its rankings. Each stock now has a score between 0 and 100. You now put them in order by score and choose the top 20. That's how the Portfolio 123 ranking systems work. It's more holistic and common sense than screening, and the results, both back-tested and out of sample, real-time, are far better. Before you create your own ranking system, it's probably best to play around with Portfolio 123's pre-built core ranking systems. We've built six systems according to six groups of factors, and we've also put them all together in a system called Core Combination. We'll start by taking a look at that one. It's a good one and I suggest that you work from it in order to create your own ranking system by adding, subtracting, and changing factors in it. You'll see that it's built out of six nodes, each of them looking like a black folder. If you click on them, you'll see all the nodes that are inside each folder. If those nodes are also folders, you can click on them too to see what's inside those. And each of the folders and each of the nodes is assigned a weight in percentages, with the percentages inside each folder adding up to 100%. Next to the percentages are some symbols. A blue globe means to rank the factor in comparison to all stocks in the universe. A red factory means to rank it in comparison to other stocks in the same industry. And a blue factory means to rank it in comparison to other stocks in the same sector. Now all this looks complicated and scary, but don't be intimidated. Your ranking system doesn't have to look like this. In fact, it could look like this. This system just takes all the factors in the core combination and presents them as a long list, rather than putting them into folders. It will function, however, a little differently from the core combination system because putting nodes into folders changes how they behave a little bit. I'm not going to get into that in this video, but we have a handy document on our website called How Ranking Works that explains why. Now, using the gear symbol, copy the core combination ranking system into your account so that you can play with it. Now click on Core Momentum, and then click on each of the four folders in that folder. Let's say you think this folder could be improved. You think it's just too complicated and it's missing some things you want. I'll show you how to experiment with it. First, let's remove the Quarterly Returns folder. Simply click on it, then click on Copy and Paste. You'll see a drop-down menu. This enables you to copy or delete or paste a node. You can also copy or cut subnodes. Click on Cut and now that folder vanishes. Now let's look at the Technical Indicators folder. I want to buy stocks when they dip. I believe that momentum is long-term, but mean reversion works better in the short term. So click on Up-Down Ratio 20. This measures how many up days and how many down days there have been in the last four weeks. Well, I want to buy stocks with lots of down days in the last four weeks, so I'm going to click on Lower Values and then on Update. Then I'm going to cut up-down ratio 60. Now this folder looks the way I want it. But now the weights of the main core momentum folder and the weights of the technical indicators subfolder no longer add up to 100%. So we need to fix that. Click on the technical indicators subfolder, then click on weights. We can either assign new weights or we can click on one of the buttons on the right clear, distribute evenly, fill zeros evenly, and normalize. Clear sets the weights to zero. If all weights are zero, the default behavior is equal weighting. 
Distribute evenly will change the weights to 50% each. Fill zeros evenly is used if you have, say, six nodes and one of them is 50% and the others are all zero. If you press that button, the zeros will all change to 10% each. Here, I'm going to use the Normalize button, which will take the 50% and 20% and change them to 71.4% and 28.6%, keeping the proportions exactly the same. Don't forget to click Update after this. I'll do the same thing for the weights in the Core Momentum folder, and then I'll click Save. Now, let's say I want to add a new folder to this system, a folder for size. So I click on the very top node, and then click on Add Node. When I click on Choose, it gives me six options. We'll talk about the first four today. First, I'm going to choose the first option, Composite. Composite is a folder. It asks me for the folder's name. I'll call it Core Size. I click on Add, and the new folder appears at the bottom of my ranking system. Now this folder is empty. I click on it, then click on Add Node again. Now I'm going to choose a stock factor, Market Cap. In the search box, I type in market cap, and then I click on add. You'll see a node pops up on the left. Notice that the arrow is pointing up. That means that stocks with higher market caps get higher ranks, and that's not what I want. I want small caps and micro caps. So I click on that node, and then on lower values and update. Now the arrow points downward like I want it to. Now I'll add another stock factor, total assets following exactly the same steps. Notice that when I typed in assets, a whole lot of factors appeared, and I had to scroll down to get the one I wanted. Now the next factor I want to add to my core size folder is volume. I want stocks with low volume. The factor I want measures not the number of shares traded, but the number of dollars traded per day, which is called daily dollar volume. And it's not a factor, it's a function. What's the difference? A factor is like a word, market cap, A-S-T-T-O-T-Q for total assets quarterly. A function is a word with parentheses after it. There are a lot of things in Portfolio 1, 2, 3 that require specification, and those are functions. Now, before I add daily dollar volume, I need to think about what I'm doing. If the stock is an ADR, an American Depository Receipt, it's going to trade on foreign exchanges too, and the daily dollar volume is going to be very low compared to the actual amount traded, because the data we have is only for U.S. exchanges. So if I just add daily dollar volume, all the ADRs are going to go to the top because they're going to be the most lightly traded. So I want to rank those stocks separately from the others, and the same thing goes for stocks that trade primarily on Canadian exchanges. So what I need to do is quite complicated, but Portfolio 123 makes it pretty simple. I first add a conditional node. I'll call it daily dollar volume. Now the formula, however, is not for daily dollar volume, but for the condition. So I'm going to add the formula universe ADR equals true. That means I'm going to treat ADRs differently from other stocks. Now, after you press add, you'll see a new folder at the bottom of your ranking system with subfolders labeled true and false. These folders are currently empty, and you need to fill them in. So, since there's not a good way to measure volume for ADRs in the True folder, I'll just add Market Cap. Now, in the False folder, I still need to separate stocks that trade primarily on Canadian exchanges from other stocks. So I'll add another conditional node with the label Canadian question mark and the formula Country Can equals True and Universe NOOTC equals False. Why do I need both of those? because some stocks are based in Canada, but they trade on U.S. exchanges, and those stocks should be treated just like all the rest. What I'm worried about is companies that trade primarily on the Canadian exchanges, but for which I only get U.S. dollar volume. Then, in both the true and the false folders, I can add my own formula for daily dollar volume. In the true node, I'll choose stock formula, and then I'll type my label, daily dollar volume, and formula median daily total 120 in the box. Then I'll click on that node and click copy and copy it into the false node. Now I'm ranking each category of stocks separately. If I hadn't done this and just tried daily dollar volume on all stocks, 
I would have gotten tons of ADRs in Canadian stocks as their daily dollar volume on US exchanges is very low. Now I have to assign some weights, which is quickly and easily done for both the core size folder and for the entire core combinations folder. I click on weights and then fill them in as I demonstrated earlier. Now let's see which stocks this ranking system chooses. Click on Ranks, then on Run. Unfortunately, most of the stocks in this list are too tiny for me to safely buy. Do I really want a stock with a market cap of only $7 million, or what if its price is only $0.02? Cents? So I'll switch universes to one I've already designed that limits me to stocks with at least a minimum liquidity. Now, when I click on Ranks, I get stocks that I can actually buy. You can also put tickers in the Ranks tab and see how they rank against your universe. If you click on Performance, you can use the default settings, but I strongly advise you never to use all fundamentals when backtesting ranking systems, or you'll be choosing stocks you could never invest in. Notice that since I changed my universe for the Ranks mode, it sticks here in the Performance mode, so I can run it using the default settings. It takes a little while to process, but I end up with a chart that looks like this. This tells me that if I had chosen the top 5% of stocks in my universe with rebalancing every four weeks since 1999 using this system and limiting myself to stocks with a price of $3 or more, I would have gotten this annual return, which is really high. Maybe I could have gotten an even higher return had I also shorted the bottom 5%, which got this return. You can change the parameters all you want. Personally, I prefer to look at only the last 10 years, only 10 buckets, and set the minimum price at $1. Now I get a chart that looks like this, which is still a very nice looking chart. Before I conclude, I should explain how NAs are handled. Click on Ranking Method. The default setting is percentile NAs negative. This means that NAs go to the bottom of the list for all regular nodes, no matter whether they're ranked higher better or lower better. But you can also choose percentile NAs neutral. That means that all NAs go to the middle of the list. This can make a big difference. Let's say that PE is one of your factors. And let's say the median PE of all companies is 24. With percentile NAs negative, all companies with negative net income will be ranked at the bottom. With percentile NAs neutral, all companies with negative net income will be ranked about the same as companies with a PE of 24. That's certainly not what you want. But on the other hand, let's say you're using gross margin as one of your factors. Gross margin is going to be NA for most stocks in the financial and real estate industries. But maybe you don't want to exclude all of those. Maybe you want them somewhere in the middle. You would want them neutral. In that case, you want percentile NAs neutral. Another example, let's say you're using a lot of three-year and five-year measures in your ranking system then all companies with less than three years of financial statements will rank at the bottom for NAs negative and in the middle for NAs neutral. That concludes this introduction to ranking systems. If you haven't already subscribed to Portfolio123, we offer a very inexpensive three-week trial that comes with a free one-hour demo. If you're interested in learning even more about ranking, I invite you to register for our webinar. I hope to see you on our platform.